other than just a brief bit and other than like the learnings from it. Um, so I'm really excited to have you on here and I'll let you take it away and introduce what you're talking about and yourself and everything. Yes. And I will just be here listening and learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feel free to jump in whenever too. Oh my gosh. So I'm Christy Powell. Awesome. Hello. Um, I am so excited to be here. I was an Olympian in 2000. I swam breaststroke and um, I'm currently a third grade teacher. I just got, um, I'm on my second day of summer break. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would love for you guys, hello everyone, I would love for you guys if you would go ahead and ask some questions in the comment section. I am so excited to be here and answer anything um, that you have to ask about overcoming disappointment in sports. I have um, a lot of experience with this, so a little bit about me and my backstory is that my first time I ever tried out for the Olympic team, I tried out when I was 17 years old uh, for the 1996 Olympics. And I was so young and so I uh, senior in high school, so naive. And um, I ended up getting, it, it, at Olympic trials, you have to get first or second place to make the team. And I ended up getting third place by 17 one hundredths of a second. And I did what any 17 year old would do. I got out of the water. And I walked over to the diving well and I just started bawling and my parents were up in the stands like waving at me and like, we love you. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I love you too, whatever. <laughs> and, um, and then little did I know that I was being um, photographed while I was sitting there crying. And a month later, my picture uh, appeared on Swimming World magazine and it was a split cover and it was called The Agony and the Ecstasy. And I was the agony and the girl who beat me by 17 hundredths of a second was the ecstasy. <laughs> so um, that was major. Like I wanted to quit at that point. I didn't want to show my face in the swimming community anymore. I thought I would never like ever, ever be able to overcome that. <laughs> I thought that there was no coming back from the just embarrassment oh of it. Uh, and then fast forward forward four years later I I worked through it and I decided that I was going to try I was going to keep swimming because if I gave up then I would never become an Olympian and um I, I ended up <laughs> going to the Olympic trials swimming in the 100 breaststroke and this time missing the Olympic team by one one hundredth of a second um which is a small fraction of time you can miss the team by yay me and um oh. it was devastating it was absolutely devastating and I remember jumping out of the water being like okay don't get your picture on the cover of swimming world magazine again <laughs> like get out of the water and um I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this then. I, I actually met one of my coaches who put a lot into perspective for me, which is the one, th one thing I want to talk about. But um, three days later, I ended up being able to bounce back and I made the Olympic team in the 200 breast and I finally got to be an Olympian. So I have a lot of experience with <laughs> overcoming, um, yes. overcoming disappointment and actually using disappointment as a, like a motivation tool and something that really helps me help me push forward and get ready for like what's next I used it as reflection and just making sure that I was constantly using it to help me move forward so I am so excited I think it's so, so take it away should we answer some question I <laughs> yes yes and before we go any further like I think that there's something that is really special about you and one thing that I think just for everybody listening and watching, Christy is one of those female athletes that has always been very open about, hey, I failed and I hurt and I cried and I screamed and, you know, and this is, and, and, but, but I'm also happy, you know, and I'm also loving, I'm learning to love what I've learned from it. So it's not this whole, you know, like, oh, woe is me. Like there's defeat. Like you've been able to really shift your perspective, but you were a human and you were really upset and went through like a really tough time of depression and all that stuff. So it's important to note that like, it's a normal thing and everyone watching like Chrissy has been so open about it. So this is like one of those stories that I think goes down in history for most people that know Chrissy and most people that know swimming, like this was a big a big win on her part to turn it around. Yeah. So I'm excited. <laughs> Thanks. No, absolutely. And I think that's one of the biggest um, misconceptions is that like a lot of times you hear, oh, toughen up and, and jump back in and you're fine. And it's, 
it's no, there is emotion in there. It's feeling you put so much hard work and energy into something that when something doesn't go your way, when you have an obstacle, when you have disappointment and you know, those disappointments mm. come in a thousand different like forms. They could come in the form of like your equipment, like your goggles broke and all of a sudden it's like you're in the middle of the race and your goggles broke and now, now what? Or you have that bad race, you have that bad practice, you're injured, you're sick. There's so many different ways it's but it's part of life and it's part of what helps you grow and move forward and it gives us you know these disappointments really do give you the greater appreciation for the journey that you're taking and the success when it finally came mm -hmm. i've always said that making the olympic team in 2000 and you know not all of us are the Michael Phelpses where we can go ahead and make like five Olympics and win thousands of medals. And, you know, I made one Olympic <laughs> and I came home with one medal. And for me, that one medal is like, it means so much beyond just, okay, I got second place in the world. To me, that meant I didn't mm -hmm. give up on myself. And after every disappointment, I was able to stand back up and I was able to push through with I was able to push through and, and get back up on the blocks and dive back in and never give up until I, I, I had accomplished my dreams. Now that took a lot. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. you have to have that feeling. You can't just like push it down like that disappointment, that 17 year old that cried on the side of the pool. That's a completely normal reaction. But you have to learn how mm -hmm. to kind of focus it and channel it and get a hold of it and not let it run your life and, and let it get away from you. Um, I've always, I've, I've never had a coach be like, you know, suck it up, be tougher, you're okay, because they knew like, okay, I'm going to give myself a little bit of time, a little bit of time to feel this. I need to, I need to feel this. And then I'm going to, it my mind gradually changes to, okay, now, now I want to mm. prove that I can do this. <laughs> like, I didn't work this hard yeah. this long to sit here and get third place again. No, I need to do this again. And so I think it's, it's fine. You just have to work through those emotions. You can't just suppress them and push them away and hope that they go away because they won't. They absolutely won't. Yeah. That's a really, that, yeah, that's a key thing. And I don't know where you were planning on specifically beginning with that, but I think that's a good part to, to think about starting with is, what is it that you first initially felt? Like, what's the first feeling right after you fail yeah. or like right after something doesn't go your way? And how was that handled? Not only by you, but by others. And like you said, coaches yeah. and parents and friends, like what is that first initial thing that that you feel that happened yeah, that first like oh walk God. us through that, that first yeah emotion, that first initial emotion when I hit the wall and I turned around and I saw third oh, again I was like you've got to be joking me <laughs> but I think the most important thing is that um you really do have to be careful of your mindset and not take the woe to me like how dare the universe do this to me and I can't believe that this happened again and you know how it it, it happens it didn't, nobody came out and purposely did anything to you. And I think that's one of the most important things that I constantly had to remind myself is that, you know, this is someone else's mm -hmm. journey and their journey was to make the Olympic team. And my journey was to, how am I going to deal with this? And how am I going to react to it? And how am I going to use this to move forward? What am I going to do with it? Am I going to curl up in a ball and just kind of cry and give up? Or am I going to bounce back? And am I going to use, um, you know, Am I going to reflect and say, okay, well, what went well? Like what, what went well? And even in that moment where it was just like, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to talk to my coaches. I don't want to talk to my teammates. And you know, some of my teammates were even making the team that night and I'm trying to be so happy for them. And in the, deep down, I'm so like broken hearted. It really is the agony of defeat, but um, mm. it, it really was, you have to look at, okay, there were things that went well in this race. What were they? And for me, it was looking at the 100 breaths and being like, I didn't go a bad time. It wasn't like I totally blew my race. I, I went actually one 100th off of my best time. <laughs> Which I was like, oh, that 100. But it's yeah. like I went fast. Yeah. I, I'm not swimming poorly. So am I going to use all of my emotions and just totally deplete my energy and just be so focused on this, or am I going to just have to admit that the past is the change what just happened? 
there's no going back. I can't rewind time as much as I wanted to, as much as I wanted to stand up on the blocks and be like, no, <laughs> this is not fair. I want to stop my foot and be like, take your mark, go. Like, let's go again. <laughs> there was none of that. You couldn't do that. So <laughs> I had to, I had to remind myself the past is the past. I'm not going to be able to do that hundred again. So mm. moving forward, what, what am I going to do for this 200? I can't change the past. So what am I going to do going forward? And that's one of the things it was just, I had to, I kind of had to just accept it. And it took me a while. It took, I went back to the hotel room. I locked myself out of my room. I lost my key. I'm sitting there crying in the hallway with my spaghetti, just like bawling. And it was, it was heartbreaking, but it, I had to take the time to just accept that the hundred was not for me. It was not in my future at the Olympics. And I had to, I had to refocus everything and get on and move past it. Yeah, that's what did anybody tell you that you shouldn't feel that or like that you should calm down or like, you know, control your emotions or, you know, like, what were some of the comments I think given to you during that? Yeah, so I think yeah. actually, one of, the best, one of the best things that actually happened is as soon as I got out of the water, I was walking over and I was honestly, I think just in a, in a state of shock. Um, and I didn't really know what to do with it. And I was walking towards one of my coaches and I saw um, Coach Schulberg, who I swam with in the summer. And he was the coach at Germantown Academy. And he really put it into perspective for me. He grabbed me by the shoulders and he, he made me look at him. And because I was just, I was all over the place. And he made me look at him and he said, it ain't cancer, kid. You're going to be fine. Mm. And it really took. Mm someone to just kind of get give me some perspective on what was happening at that point that it was a race it was not the end of the world and my story wasn't over I had a chance to rewrite the story um my journey was not over with that hundred it wasn't the last thing that I was ever going to do so I needed to remind myself that that hundred while disappointing as could possibly be it was not the last race I was ever going to race in my life I had to have him mm. remind me, like, this is not worst case scenario. I'm not sick. I, no one died. This is not the end of the world. Get it together. This is not mm. the end of your story. Let's mm -hmm. go. Yeah, that's key. That, that, and perspective is everything. Yeah. I know. And it's oh, hard. Man. It's that's hard great. when you have all of that emotion and all of that feeling. And I think that one of the best things my parents ever did for me is that they knew that when I was ready to talk, I was going to talk. They knew, and they would, mm. <laughs> you know, they learned kind of like early on yeah. not to, not to say, you know, okay, like, oh, good job. When they knew I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> and they, and they yeah. They like got to the point where they would be like, so how did it feel? <laughs> They started right. asking more. Right, which is also yes, key. It's also yeah. Key. Like, I'm just asking those like open ended questions, like get me talking, but they also knew like give me an hour, <laughs> give me an hour to just to kind of yeah. take a break and just get um just <laughs> get let my emotions kind of settle down a little bit. Um and that was, you know, that was one of the best things of my parents. They just kind of like gave me the space. I remember they wanted you could see I could see how badly they wanted to like comfort me and and just um like just talk about it after because I think you know that's their they're nurturing and that's the thing they're like what what can we do and I was like I just need to be alone <laughs> but yeah. it is and then when I was ready to talk I was like I'm mad <laughs> Let's, I'm ready to yeah I'm like I'm ready to go but I think just having my parents there and knowing that when I was ready that they were ready to listen and that they weren't going to give me advice on my race because that was my coach's job. They weren't going to tell mm. me it was, it's, you know, everything's going to be okay because they knew in my heart, I didn't feel like everything was going to be okay, but they were there to listen and they mm -hmm. were there to say, well, what's mm -hmm. next to remind me, okay, let's mm -hmm. stay in the present. Let's not go back to the past. You can't let mm. don't keep going back. Like, what if I would have done this? What if I would have done that? The what ifs aren't going to ever change anything. It's, okay, well, what are you going to do next? What's your next step? How mm -hmm. are you going to make sure that that doesn't happen again? And there were so many things. Um, like, I'm that type of person that before my race, I'm dancing and laughing and waving and um, 
I mm. would, you know, just, you know, behind the blocks, not coffee, but just, I would stand there and I was like, this race is mine. I've got this. And before the yeah. hundred at trials, yeah. I was horribly like not myself. Even Jack, I guess my coach, Jack Bowerly at Georgia turned to one of the other coaches and went, oh crap. Like I wasn't breathing. Mm. I wasn't waiting at anybody. I wasn't mm -hmm. looking for my parents. And all I could think in my head was don't get third. Don't get third. Don't get third. And mm. mindset mm. is such an important part of this that, you know, first of all, I can't believe I even threw that into the universe. <laughs> like I threw a third place. Yeah, right. Because that's what you're giving exactly energy to. Yeah. What the universe gave yeah. me. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. it's just, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't myself. I was freaking out. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was one of the biggest key pieces is that reflection tool and just looking back and be like, what, what went wrong? Well, everything, everything went wrong. I wasn't myself. Yeah. I was too worried on an outcome versus just letting my body do. I swam thousands of hundred brushstrokes. Why didn't I just let my body, mm -hmm. why didn't I turn my mind off and let my body do its job? I was too worried about, you know, make the team, don't get third, do this, do that. I just needed to shut it down. And so that was one of the things I really yeah. thought about before the 200 is shut your brain down. You know what to do. Go out there, have fun, wave, smile, breathe, <laughs> and just go get it. Yeah. That's awesome. And actually, one of the parents just, Jan, asked, you know, and, and you brought up such a good point with that silent confidence, because I know myself as an athlete as well. I had that yeah. too. Like, you know, that you're gonna crush yeah. it, right? Like, you know, you're gonna just be like, yeah. So what's the difference between knowing that and showing that? Mm -hmm. Like, so if and she said, you know, like my athletes had boosted confidence, but now everybody thinks you're just better than everybody else. What's the difference between knowing that and showing that and trying to block out what everybody else would say or think about you or, you know, yep. like what are some ways that you were able to know that you had the confidence, but feel that. And like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a very, it's yep. an interesting feeling because it's, it's, it's something that it I is. think a, a lot of athletes. Yeah. Yeah. There's such a fine line between cockiness and confidence. And, you know, you're constantly mm. like towing that line of which one are, which one is she? Is she being cocky? Is she being confident? And I think a lot of, um, you have to remember that you are responsible for that person that's in your lane and you're not responsible for anybody else on either side of you. And you can't control what other people are going to think and you can't control what other people are going to do. You have to stay with what you can control, what you can do. And, um, so when I got behind the blocks, I was just focused. I was never looking at anybody else. Um, I always made sure I said good luck to everybody. Like before the race, I, before they would start announcing, I was like, hey, good luck. Hey, good luck. And then the minute they blew that whistle, it was over. Like nice Christie was done. Yeah. <laughs> and goggles went on. Yeah, and yeah. And, and so it's not a mentality. My, my confidence wasn't a mentality that I had to go behind the blocks and just be this super tough, intimidating, scary person. But what it meant was when I stood behind the blocks and I put my goggles on, I was standing there knowing that I did X, Y, and Z at practice, which was probably more than anybody else did. And that when I was behind those blocks, I put in, when everybody else got out of practice, I did five 200s with paddles and fins, you know, just to do something extra. And that it was the confidence came from my preparedness and knowing what I had done. And so I think a yeah. lot of, con I, I, that's what a lot of confidence is, is just knowing that you're completely prepared and that you're ready for it and mm -hmm. just standing behind the blocks. And I love, absolutely love the TED talk by Amy Cuddy where she does the, um, yeah. the power posing. And I'm like, oh my God, we power posed love that. before power posing was even a thing where you're standing there with your arms on your yep. and you're just staring down your lane. And it's really, you know, I think back to those times where I see myself in a stance where I have my, hip, my hands on my hips and I'm just staring down the block and I'm like not thinking, okay, I'm power posing. But if you think about it, that pose absolutely transforms your entire mental state because totally. all of a sudden your body, it's, what did she call it? She called it fake it till you believe it. And it's absolutely, yep. it's fake it till you become it. And you're absolutely, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you're exuding confidence behind the blocks. And when you can exude confidence behind the blocks, 
other people are going to look at you. You can't be responsible for what anybody else is doing. But when people are, when you're standing behind the yeah. blocks and you are exuding confidence, that's intimidating for other people. And so you, it, it really comes down to what are you doing to help yourself perform the best? Absolutely. And everybody will have their opinion. Hi, Athletes, Paulette. How parents, are you? coaches, Sorry, whatever. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I love it. And it's so, but it is so true. It's like, it's so true that you have, you know, and I think that's something that I'm very passionate about as well is, is we can all boost our confidence, right? And feel empowered and empowerment. The term empowerment has a different meaning yes. for everybody. But I think if, if other people are going to perceive what you're doing a, a certain way, that's their exactly. perception. That's not up to you. So whatever you do is according to your confidence exactly. and however you feel confident is according to what you yeah. do. And I think instilling that is good. And so that also leads me to want to say something about what you mentioned about how your parents yeah. asked a lot of questions. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Like you said that instead of like telling you like, what could you have yeah. done? Or, you know, like what if, or blah, blah, blah. Like they instilled that sense of confidence in you by asking those questions. Yeah. And so, my parents, it yeah. was so funny because I do not come from a swimming family. Uh, my mom doesn't swim. My dad can swim, <laughs> but he doesn't. He was a baseball player. He was a mm -hmm. basketball player. Um, um, but, and so I love the fact that we went, went to the swimming. My parents weren't there critiquing my strokes. I think my mom, when I was little, like she mm -hmm. got down the fact that butterfly and breaststroke needed the two hand touch. So she would stand up and do that. Like she'd be like, two hands, honey, <laughs> two hands. Um, so just knowing that my parents always were that silent support behind me. And just knowing that like mm -hmm. they, they gave me permission to go follow my dreams. Like they gave me full permission, go off. And they knew the nature of sport was going to be a roller coaster. There were going to be ups and there were going to be downs and they were in it for everything. But just knowing that mm -hmm. I never had to worry about if my parents were disappointed in me, that was huge because I, I knew that I was swimming for me. And I knew that when I was swimming for Georgia, I was swimming for my team, but I always knew that I was never swimming for anybody else to make anybody else happy except for myself. And I feel like that took a giant, um, a giant piece of that pressure off of me because I didn't have anything to prove mm -hmm. to anybody else. It was always just for me. What was I doing in the pool and how was it going to transfer into a racing situation? It wasn't, I I'm gonna swim fast for my coach. Um, I have to swim fast or my parents won't love me or they're not gonna be happy or they're not gonna be out of uh... me. I never had to worry. I knew my parents we're going to be proud of me no matter what. And they really just, since day one, I was a terrible little swimmer. <laughs> like, so bad. <laughs> and my brother was an amazing swimmer. Like, came home with trophies as tall as him. And I had my little ribbons. And just <sighs> knowing the fact that they treated the both of us the same in our entire lives, no matter if we won, lost, got disqualified, like... I mean, I think the funniest things probably came when we got disqualified. They'd be like, whoops, what'd you do? They still took us for ice cream. It was fine. <laughs> like, just knowing that I didn't yeah. have to worry about disappointing my parents and just knowing that they were going to love me no matter who I was. If I was Christy the swimmer or Christy the student or Christy the human, that was huge. Yeah, and just, oh, I wanted to go That's back awesome. to, so the, the fake it till you believe it and the confidence piece. So um, mm -hmm. in 2003, 2004, I ended up getting chronic fatigue syndrome. And I was about as low as you possibly could. My confidence was like bottom. Um, I had just come mm -hmm. off of world championships and I really didn't want to go because my body was toast. Even like the doctors at USA Swimming, they were like, <laughs> probably shouldn't go um, I went, yeah. and I ended up not even making finals of the 200 breaststroke which mm. oh god was so more it was mortifying and embarrassing but not it, it was like you know you have to realize those emotions those are feelings those are emotions and you know no one else was looking at me thinking oh my god look at her I was feeling these toward myself and it was horrible and I I knew um my first meet after that, I came back and my brother has always been this sense of calm for me. Um, I know a lot of things like mm. one of the biggest things in me overcoming a lot of my obstacles and disappointments was having um, a, a 
him as my human. <laughs> like I, I, he was my yeah. calming factor and you know, he would just he, at trials after I got third, they snuck him down on the pool deck and I would start freaking out and be like, Oh God, what if I get third again? He's like, Hey, you want to go see a movie tomorrow? I'm like, what? <laughs> what? No. You know? and <laughs> he can yeah, change it for you. Changed, yeah. He would change my focus. Like he would take my mind straight off it and mm. shift my, my focus. So he came to my first meet after I got, after I didn't make um, the, the final at world championships and he talk about giving me a little perspective. He looked at me and said, what happened to you? He said, you used to stand behind the blocks looking like you owned the pool. He said, and now you look scared. He's like, why are you, what are you scared of? And it really took him saying that to really wake me up and being like, what am I scared of? Am I scared of going a bad time? Am I scared that I'm going to die during the race? Am I scared? What am I scared of? And it goes back to the yeah. fake it till you become it. And he told me, he, and it's so funny because all this is before all of these TED Talks and things. He's like, and he kind of was like, he's like, I, and he's younger than me. And he's like, I don't care what you have to do. I don't care if you have to growl, get behind the blocks. He's like, I want to see you <laughs> be scary again. And, get behind. And, I did, and I did, I stood behind the blocks that night and I was like, oh God, I feel really stupid. Oh, I don't care, whatever, just do it. And I swam and I finally had a race where I felt like myself. So it really is, you mm. can really just bring that confidence back to yourself, even if you are faking it, <laughs> it will become part of you. That's so key. And so would you say that you understood, so I guess for like parents or coaches yeah. or anybody listening to this, what is the, what are some ways that that you remember specifically, like I personally remember things that my dad said yeah. or that my coach Mike DeBoer said, or, you know, it's like when I was young, like yeah. super young, but like questions that were asked or things that they did that they didn't, that we didn't yeah. realize were actually helping mm -hmm. um, them, yeah. you know? And so, and it's not like, a, it's not like a manipulative right. thing or anything like that. It's just structuring things in a way that like, perhaps a, a the childlike mind, like a younger teenager mind would see it versus comp making it complex. Yeah. Like, do you remember what were, what were some ways or some things that are, were helpful yeah, for you? Just, like specifically? I remember, um, you know, if I had the biggest way is that, you know, whenever, whenever you fail, you want you, the, you can handle it two ways. The first way is you like get, you get out of the water, you walk off the court and you're like, Oh, I see stink. I can't believe I did that. Like, mm. and you just beat yourself up emotionally, or you can realize mm -hmm. that failure is something that you have to do over and over and over again to reach your, to reach your goal, to reach the end point. And the best athletes fail more times. It always brings me back to like that Michael Jordan um, commercial. Oh my God. It was, yeah. I love that commercial. It showed him missing all these shots and messing up and totally like letting his team down and all these things. And at the end he was, um, he gave the best quote and it, it was literally like, it was something about, and because of all of these failures is why I'm able to succeed now. And it's just like, yes, yeah. that's exactly it. You have to, you don't have yeah. to like it. <laughs> you don't have to like failing, but it's part of the process. It's a natural part of the process that you have mm -hmm. to learn how to deal with it. And I just remember when I was younger, just, you know, getting out of the water and, and being bummed about a race and just, and, and just remembering people say, okay, so one race, you had one bad race, you had 50 great races, but you have one bad race. So which one's the outlier? Which one's the one that's most likely going to mm. happen again, the good race or the bad race. And then you have to admit, okay, the, the good race is going to happen again, because I had more good races than races, yeah. or even just something like you know, just say Serena Williams is your, is your idol in tennis and just asking like, well, how do you think she would handle this right now? Do you think that she would walk off the court mm -hmm. and beat herself up and be like, I stink. I can't believe that I would do this. Like, or would you agree with her and say, yes, you're terrible. You should quit for sure because you had one mm -hmm. bad match. Like wh how would you, what advice would you give to a pro that was having the same kind of day? Would you just tell them to give up and go home and that you stink? Or would you say it was one? Yeah. It was one. It happens. Get over it. Move forward. Feel it. But it, yeah. W which one's most likely to happen again? The good or the bad? Yeah. 
I, I remember, and you, you're kind of alluding to this a little bit. I remember Mike DeBoer, my club coach, he's, if I had a bad race for, he would give feedback yeah. for sure. Cause constructive feedback is key. Um, the timing, now that I step back from it, the timing was everything yeah. with it. So there, if there is a race or a, let's say a point, if you're playing tennis or the next, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think of another, not a game. Um, you know, if you're in track yeah. and field or if you're in water polo, like, or the next match point, the next point, the next, the next thing that's 20 minutes away or 45 minutes yeah. away or one minute away, you know, I vividly remember coach literally looking at me and just saying, okay, you have 20 minutes. So yeah. be free. And I'd be like, you yes. know, like I want, it was almost like I wanted like, I, at the time, like, I wanted a yeah. little, like, shoulder pad or, you know, and it was like, well, no, because to move yeah. forward, we'll talk about that later, exactly. but right now, like, switch it, you have another exactly. race and, or, you know, and another thing, and so it's like, in that moment, what's helpful, and sometimes it's just like, okay, moving yeah. forward, You're like, back. we'll yeah. talk, yeah, we'll address that later, like, there's nothing wrong with you, yeah. it's just, that was that. This yeah. is this, you know, and moving I forward. Call it so when coaching, I, that's key. I always give my girls a five minute rule too. It's like, uh, you know, you're in a dual meet and that was your first race yeah. and, it, and it totally did not go well. Okay. You have three other races going on or you're at NCAAs yeah. and you're going to swim yeah. 16 times in three days and your first race doesn't go the way it's going to. Oh my gosh. Like you, you cannot, your, your energy is precious. And so if you're going to waste all this energy, just totally beating yourself up and being sad and crying, you're, you are just blowing all of the energy that you have in store and you don't have anything. You're not going to have anything when you yeah. go to pull from your energy stores for the next, <laughs> for the next race, you're going to realize, Oh my gosh, maybe I shouldn't have been so sad for so long because I'm exhausted. It's exhausting to be sad. Um, so I always told my high so school, tiring. Like, you, have five yeah. minutes. you have the five minute rule. Like, go ahead, go be bad and mad and sad yep. and cry don't cry in the locker room because you don't you know I'll show you my cover of swimming world magazine if you want to see it about what happens when you cry on deck but um <laughs> yeah said, yeah that. yeah and then, that's key. let's go let's move forward you can't change and, and there's no mm. what ifs there you're gonna beat yourself mm. up and you will just totally get lost in what if I would have done this what if I would have done that if only there is no if only. Yeah. You can't change it. So let's go forward. You got Jack used to do the same thing to me. He'd be like, all right, kid, we got to relay. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> right. So it's like, what's next? And so, and also one of the Robert Ball asked in the comments that his athlete particularly sees people that are better than them in the mm -hmm. race too. Um, and automatically says, oh, I, I know those people are going to beat me or yeah. like, I'm okay with like second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Yeah. Um, and so not only maybe address, not only that mm -hmm. within how to help an sure. athlete get out of yeah. that, but also like provide some understanding in that mindset, yeah. like that whole mindset. So an athlete shoes and then like, how does a parent or a coach yeah. assist with the whole like, well, they're going to beat me like I'm fine getting like second or third or fourth yeah. or fifth. Like, cause sometimes we do that subconsciously. Yeah. Like, I don't know that I'm good enough for this or, you know, in a game, I don't know that the other team, you know, or if you're, if you're playing goalie or if you're in a position in water polo, or if you're in a position in soccer, if you're match point in tennis, like knowing that and starting to get in the other person's yeah. head, like, Oh, they're like totally about it. Yeah. You know, like what, how do you do, how do you approach that? From oh my gosh. Angles? Your mental state is, everything and like I said going into trials mm. when I was thinking just get third just get third or, or don't get third don't get third um when I went into world championships in 1998 I was coming off of just missing the Olympic team in 96 and I was swimming against all of the um swimmers that had been at the Olympics I was swimming against the world champion the world record holder the Australian record holder I was swimming against and I was over in lane two and I remember standing I remember talking to my coach um in between prelims and finals and I was like yeah I just want to get third they have these really cool Australian hats and he's like third <laughs> I'm like yeah it's okay to get third here <laughs> like, third's okay. and he's like and he's like listen closely Chris 
<laughs> he's like, anyone can mm -hmm. be beaten on any given day. He's like, you need to remember that, that anyone can be beaten on any given day. It doesn't matter who is standing in the blocks aside of you. He's like, you walk up to those blocks. Like, it doesn't matter. Those people are racing you. You're not racing them. And they should be trying to beat you. And he's like, and you remember that. And it's all about yeah. Mental, yeah. Like, how you look at it and just really thinking about, I don't care who you are. Watch me. Well, here I go. Um, this is the day that I take you down. It's just one of those things that you have to get into your head and you just think, and it's again with that positive self-talk where it's like you stand, I remember being a little like, um, I think it was like nine mm. and 10 or 11 and 12. And I was this teeny tiny little human being, <laughs> like so little. So skinny, <laughs> so and I was standing against this girl who looked like she should have been like 14, 15, maybe 16 and over. And just looking over being like, oh my God, no, there's no way. And yeah. it got to the point where I was just like, whatever <laughs> I'm gonna take you down yeah yeah and it does it's when you yeah. shift that like I don't care how big you are I don't care who you are I'm right gonna, this is the day I take you down it's all about that it's positive, all, positive. This is so true it is it's crazy and somebody else just asked the same thing how do you stop from being nice in competition and yes. so and and this is a very important thing as well to address because I think that there's I don't want to say there's a gender right. difference with this, but it very well mm -hmm. is. Um, I think that I recall Coach Troy in college saying, you should, you know, be a little bit more of a bitch behind the box. <laughs> like, you're too nice. And But I was very similar yeah. to you. I, I knew I was going to beat everybody, but I was just having fun and dancing and laughing. So how do you shift from being nice girl to – knowing that you can beat them, but also knowing that it's left at the yep. pool or left on the court yes. or left on the field. And you, you don't take that outside yeah. of that. Like how does, oh, it's, how, talk about that yeah, a little no. bit. Cause I know that that can lead to disappointment. If you, yeah. you know, it, that is a disappointing thing. If you can't snap out of that, or if you do snap out of it or whatever, it can lead to disappointment. Absolutely. And I think one of the biggest things for me is like, I had a trigger. So for me, the blowing mm -hmm. of the whistle was my trigger. And it was like, that's when mm -hmm. I knew my game face came on. Um, so I was nice, yeah. happy, even in the ready room. And like brush strokers, you have to understand, we're a little different. Like <laughs> we're, we're yeah. very unique and yeah. odd people. Like in the ready room at trials, we were having a dance party. <laughs> and then we walked out and then, but as soon as that whistle blew, game face, it was. I was friends with every single one of those people that I was swimming aside of. My friend was the one who beat me by one one hundredth of a second in the hundred at trials. Oh, um, yeah. But the minute that whistle blows, you're not my friend anymore. I don't know. You mm. and I were racing. You're yeah. just another you you race, just person yeah. that, is sitting aside, that is swimming aside of me in the lane and we're competing now. As soon as we hit that wall, then I can put that guard down. I can put that guard back down. I'm happy for however I swim. I'm happy for however you swam. But in that time between the mm -hmm. whistle blown and when I hit the blocks, it's almost like I had like an alternative, like an alternate ego where it was just like, yeah, that whistle blew and that was my game face and it, it was go time. And I just turn it almost like I yeah. flipped a switch. And it's like, you know, you turn the switch on yeah. and off. It's like I turned my racing, my racing face on. And then as soon as I hit the wall, I was back to being Christy, but I just completely was able to turn it on and off. And I just really thought of it as like, as a switch as honestly, just, okay, go time. I'm now, this is me racing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's valid across all mm -hmm. sports too. And I think recognizing that there tends to be more disappointment when you don't honor yourself right. in that moment and you start to just do things for everybody else or because you think that you should be a certain yeah. way or whatever but it's really like what is it that I can do you know to flip into this this you know racer yeah. but also know that that's not being mean. yeah and it's not you know that that's not being it's mean. not and yeah. if people are taking that as you and especially if you're just focusing on yourself if you're not outwardly doing anything to anybody else and turning and talking smack or whatever if you're just focusing on yourself right you're not being mean. You're in the zone you are worrying about yourself and you can only control yourself you can only control what you can control 
Yeah. And it goes back to you can't control what other people think about you while while you're racing. Yeah. And if other people are thinking that you're mean, they're they're not worrying about themselves while they're racing. So mm -hmm. <laughs> again, and remember, mm -hmm. you have one person to take care of when you're competing. Yeah. Okay, this is great. Okay, so I, 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 my brain is turning like a million miles a minute. Um, and Christy, unless you have something else that you want to like pin in there, I think it would be powerful to talk about that feeling of loss if you fail. Or mm -hmm. um, let's say there's not something else yeah. that you succeeded in right after. Like let's say you fail and you're mm -hmm. done and your season's done whatever it is, your game is done, your match is done, the yeah. finals yeah. are done. And there you are, just missed glory. Yeah. What do you do? Like, what do you do? You know, like, how does that like you if you go into depression, or if you, you know, sink into a depressive state? What do you do as a parent or a coach, if that's something that they're yeah. noticing, that's or, great... you know, lack of confidence, like, it's a broad yeah, question, a but question. like, what are some ways that you first address it? Like, how do you address it? How do you know if it's really something just minute or acute no, or, that's a great, or if it's great bigger? Question. Um, when I actually came home from trials in 96, um, I didn't have the 200 to fall back on. And I remember driving home or fl I flew home and I remember getting home and my friends didn't know what to say to me. Um, my parents were awesome as always, but they just kind of left it up to me if I wanted to talk about it and I didn't. And I just kind of took four hour naps every afternoon and was really sad mm -hmm. and really bummed out. And um, it got to a point where I was, yeah. I think I like drove my family insane. They were like, get out of the house, go do something. Because, <laughs> um, yeah. because they didn't know, if they didn't know how to help me. Um, if there's nothing mm. left in your season, but you have another season, that's, that's totally different. Like if you have, because that's when I think like reflect disappointment is a chance to actually like reinforce the positive things or the positive qualities that mm. are, that's so key. Are yeah. You and not just you as the swimmer or you as the athlete or you as the basketball player. Um, it's you as like your, your personal characteristics, like, and you know, the more you hear it, the more you believe it. And so just hearing from coaches and hearing, I, I know just hearing from my parents, you know, is this really how you want this story to end? Because you're the kind of person who doesn't give up. You're the kind of kid who, who you're, you stick with it. We don't see this as the end of it. We, you, you bounce back from things. This isn't you right now. Um, you know, you're the type of person who doesn't let something like this get you down and keep you down. So what are you going to do with this? And so it really took a lot to draw me out, but it was a lot of question and answering. Like I wasn't angry. I was sad. And so I think handling anger is a little bit different than sad. And so you have to really find an, an, a way to channel that emotion, whether it's like, getting your everything down in a journal and really figuring out like, okay, what am I going to do next? Or writing down everything that went well and looking at it and, and figuring out like what, what went well and how am I going to use this or um, coming up with new goals, just yeah. having your parents. I really think it's important that, you know, if you can get to the bottom of, I mean, right at that moment, I was being led by feeling like everything was just emotion with me. And I think it really helped when my parents got to the bottom of what are you most disappointed about? Are you most disappointed you didn't make the Olympic team? Are you most disappointed that you got third? Are you most disappointed that you won the best time? Are you most disappointed that, you know, yeah. like you're going to have to watch TV like with, you know, and your friends are going to be on the Olympics and you're not like, what are you, what is the biggest thing getting you? And once I was able to get to the bottom uh, of what the most disappointing thing was, I was able to shift my focus to, okay, well, what can I do so that doesn't happen again? And right. I think, you know, that's really key. Like, what are you most disappointed yeah. about? Like two things I just took from that is like, is this how you want to see the story yeah. end? And what are you most disappointed about? Those are key. 
the question, yeah. I yeah. think. Yeah, and I think once I got to the, the point where it was like, I'm most disappointed that I didn't make the Olympics and that, I mean, it, it drove me mad. It drove me mad. And I, I started mm. to realize that I was focusing on things that I couldn't control because the girl who had beat me by 1600 mm. of a second the night before, she had gotten disqualified in the 400 IM. And she wasn't even going to swim the 100 breast. <laughs> so, you know, she needed yeah. that race to get onto the Olympic team. And those were things that I couldn't control. And I was being angry about like things that I couldn't control. And I really had to learn Mm -hmm. get over it. I needed to get over that because that was out of my control. Drop the things you can't control and worry about the things you can control. What can I control? Well, I was swimming in high school. Like maybe I needed to train a little harder. <laughs> so how can I fix that? Well, I'm going to go to college yeah. and I'm going to bust my butt at the University of Georgia. And I'm going to swim harder there. And then when I go back in four years, I'm going to be tougher, stronger, better, everything. That's so control the control. You just hit so many good points and especially so many good questions to ask. Cause I know I still appreciate questions yep. when I'm upset or disappointed sometimes more than anything. And there's some days when, and I'm sure a lot of parents on this and people that watch this can vouch for this. When you have a teenage athlete, sometimes asking questions, you get a lot of pushback. Like, I don't yeah. want to talk about it or I don't want to <laughs> like, I don't nope. want to talk about it. Yep. I don't want to like blah, 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 blah. And so those are moments where it was like what your parents did really well, give you an hour, give you a little bit of time yep. before you want to yeah. talk about it. But then once exactly. you are ready for that, and once you do open up, there's just this revelation that the athlete has themselves about what yeah. happened versus trying to, like answer to anybody it's more like they're formulating their own answer in their head and I even do that now and it's so funny now just because <laughs> when I'm when I people ask me those things I formulate it in my head and then I'm like oh okay you know <laughs> like you, yeah. you finally see what was going on in here and yeah. I think that that's a powerful thing you just nailed that like because that's so key yeah and I think I realized, for sure you know, once I once I got to the bottom of it, I realized, you know, I was racing because I wanted to be, I wanted to be on the Olympic team. I mean, that's every like little girl's dream when they put a little swim cap on, you're like, Oh my gosh, it would be so cool to go to the Olympics. But not only did I want to do that, <laughs> but I just, you know, I, I was so new to the sport. It was only my, it would have only ever been my like second international competition. And the first one had been the summer before and it was from my first nationals. I had so much to learn and I really needed to get that through my head is that like, okay, you, you need to learn more. You need to become more mentally tough. You're not ready. And I think yeah. that was hard for me to accept because I was like, no, I'm ready. I can do this. But I, I needed to really get to the point where I was yeah. like, no, <laughs> I wasn't ready yeah. and it was yeah. okay. And and I also had to learn that I needed to kind of go into racing with the nothing to lose attitude. Like, what do I have to lose? Like, what, yeah. what am I afraid of? Why I don't have to be afraid of doing bad. I don't have to be afraid of missing the team. And, you know, and that's one of those things I struggled with my whole career, even in 2000, when I was standing behind the blocks, like, mm. what if I get third? What if I get third? The best, the times that I swam the best, and that I didn't have to worry about disappointment were the times where I walked in and I was not worried about failure. I wasn't worried about outcome. I just, I like swam. It was like fly and die. <laughs> Don't worry about anything. I'm not yes. Do. Well, you also just, you hit a good point too, not worrying about the outcome. And I think that can oh, lead gosh. to a lot of disappointment and maybe, yeah. And maybe we can spend the last couple of minutes talking about that. Cause I know we, we answered like everybody's questions Yay! through all those, which was so good. <laughs> Yes. And I'm sure people have more questions, in which case they can come to you or to any of us, of course. But talk about that, because that's a really the outcome thing is not only in sport, it's in school, it's in ev everything extracurriculars, it's in expectation. Like I have a lot of athletes I work with that have high expectations of things because they're nervous of what everybody else wants their outcome yep. to be versus what is it that you really want? Like, and how do you control focusing on the moment versus yeah. the outcome? And so if you have thoughts oh on that, God. that would be awesome. No, it's, <laughs> it's, so, no, it's so This is like your area. It's, yes, this is my jam. 
No, it's yes, it, it, it really is. is though because you know I every time I I focused on I want to go this time this specific time and and lots of people set goals for themselves but when I would stand behind the block that's fine setting goals is an important part of athletics it's an important part of sports but when you stand behind the blocks. Mm -hmm you shouldn't be worrying about that. That's not what you need to be focusing on. You're not focusing on the outcome. You are focusing on, okay, here's my lane and my body knows what to do and I'm ready to rock and roll. And if I focused on, okay, mm -hmm. I need to win or I need to do this, it's everything. Anytime that you start putting information into your brain, your brain is now getting in the way of your body doing what its job. Your body knows exactly what it needs to mm -hmm. do. And so that's the beautiful thing about sport is that you practice and you practice and you practice and you practice so much that that repetition just becomes so ingrained in you that when you dive into the pool, you step onto the court, you step onto the track, your body knows what to do. It just takes over and you can just clear your mind. And when you have that clear mind, that's when success happens. But when you stand there and you think so major. about, yeah. I want this, I want this, I want this, your mind becomes clouded. And I think that's one of the things that happened in my, as you get older, you start like analyzing things more and you start like thinking about things more. And that's why like later on in my career, I would stand behind the box and be like, oh my gosh, are my elbows high enough? Is this happening? Is this happening? And it really did. It started to affect the way I was racing instead of just having that nothing to lose attitude. And so I think I totally to give myself, you know, I, and I've also worked with athletes on just, you know, giving yourself permission to drop the expectation of having to like make everybody else happy and like swimming a relay and, and being the fastest because you have to do it mm. for your team. Well, of course you want to swim the fastest when you do the relay because you want your relay to go awesome. But I always say like, how would you respond to a teammate if you don't have like the best split or you don't have the best, like, if your teammate was in the same situation, would you look at that teammate and be like, oh my God, how dare you not go fast enough? <laughs> no. So you have to let go. So of the true. Expectation that yeah. people are putting all of this pressure on you and that you have to do well because everybody's counting on you. That has to just fall away. Like you can't have all of these extra things sitting on your shoulders. If you are going to do well, all of these things on your shoulders do is create opportunity for disappointment to happen. Yeah, no, that's, and that's so true. Well, also it's, I think you hit it, you hit a solid area there where you were saying, you know, it's not, it's not about not having the goal, but it's not worrying about the winning. Right. Like, I think if, if you, you know, the goal is right. there, like you can still think Absolutely. about the goal and what you want without like already making it happen before it's already right. happened, you know? Right. And I think that's like something to remember. Cause I, I get a lot of questions about, well, if they don't think about the outcome, then are they not goal oriented? Like, right. do they not want the goal if they're not thinking about the outcome? And I think there's a difference. Yeah. I think, right? right? Absolutely. What did you say? I there's say, you know, if I wanted to go, you know, when I wanted to go under a minute in the hunter brushstroke, you know, in the time before tech suits and dolphin kicks, you know, I wrote that down. Yeah. I knew, like, Jack, my coach and I would sit down every year and we would sit down and write like time oriented goals and we would say, like, we would say, um, you know, meets that I wanted to make, and we would say times I wanted to go, and we absolutely had those goals, but I didn't think about those every single time I raced behind the blocks thinking, okay, we wrote down under a minute, so I'm going to go under a minute. It was never that. It was standing behind the blocks, yep. being like, okay, let's race, game time, let's go. What, you know, the... That's yeah. so good. Yeah. That's awesome. And Jennifer just asked, how do you flip the switch when you don't want to be the center of attention? You worry about eyes on you, not on your swim or the right. outcome. You you did just address a little bit of that, but you worry more about like everything yeah. else going yeah. on, <laughs> like the whole global thing yeah, versus like I you know macro like, versus micro. I those, I, they would they would blow the whistle, and I literally just put those goggles on. And to me, those were my blinders. It was like okay now, and even the goggles now. You can I loved my goggles because I could see out the side. I know I was, you're not supposed to look at anybody else when you race, but. <laughs> <laughs> but now the goggles, you can't see out the side, so they're literally blinders. So it's like you're putting on your blinders, and yeah. I would stand and I would focus on down the down the pool. So if it was the backstroke flags with the number on the on the backstroke flag in my lane. So if I was in lane four, I would just be looking at that lane four, and that was my focus, and that is all that I while I was repeating over and over, I would have like a mantra to myself, and I would just be like, "You got this. 
you've got this, you've got this. And that was my just over and over and over and Ooh, over. So I, like that that. Way, I basically just kind of like tuned out. Like I couldn't hear the crowd anymore. I couldn't hear the coaches anymore. I couldn't hear the people splashing themselves in the lanes aside of me anymore. I might have been able to like see them, but they didn't matter to me because I was just blinders on looking at that flag or looking at whatever I had caught my eye. And I was just looking at it like, got this. I've got this. Yeah. I've got this. All I would say to myself over and over again. Horse blinders. That's something we all work on at Rise. Like all the mentors use horse blinders for, <laughs> and that's, and that's one of the things we, we talk about because I think that the analogy of, of putting those on yeah. is everything for an athlete. I still do it. Like I'll be yeah. driving and I'm like, doo, 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 you know, I'm like blinders <laughs> circle, like keep going in the same line, you know, like this isn't about like, sometimes it's, you know, you've got to stay in your own lane, so to speak, no matter if it's a game, if it's a match, if it's a race, if it's, a tournament, whatever, like stay in your own scope of what you know how to control of yes. what you know how to do like physically and emotionally and mentally. And so that's so key is like the act of doing that was like your cue. Like that's your cue point. And I think that that's a, a really good observation that you had, like connecting the mind and the body. Like that's like my thing <laughs> that I go no, to. Exactly. Exactly. So, it's like a you know, my body That's awesome. Over. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you have any other wrap up thoughts or anything that you really feel is important for parents, coaches, friends, teammates, athletes alike, but mainly parents and coaches to yeah. understand about disappointment and like how to navigate that with an athlete? Sure. Um, I think, the biggest thing for me is just knowing that, um, you know, as an athlete, I had this amazing support system. Um, and because it's mm -hmm. really hard when you face an, a disappointment or you face an obstacle, you know, you work really hard to try to like keep yourself up. I mean, your first instinct is, is kind of, you know, you, you're disappointed, but your first instinct is to try to try to recover and try to bounce back. Um, but I think that the biggest thing that was, key to me being able to overcome my disappointments was really finding those people like my people my support system, yeah. to help me maintain those those positive feelings and to help me maintain like hope for the future <laughs> and and to keep really yeah myself up. like my brother was one of those people my parents were those people my teammates were those people I was surrounded with the best support system where I knew at any given moment I had mm -hmm. at least 10 people that I could go to I in the drug testing room after I was oh, when I was the alternate and they drug test you with the two people who just beat you uh, I'm on the phone with my friend like you can't be on your phone I'm like I got third so I'm gonna be fine yeah we're good <laughs> I'm on the phone. but just knowing that I had someone to talk to who literally she was telling a story about how she had just hit her husband's car so I mean just something to take your mind and make you laugh and just get your keep you from beating yourself up is so key um and athletes always going to yeah. you know no one likes losing or being disappointed and they're going to beat themselves up on their own so having a mm -hmm. parent or a coach add on to that like right away it's very hard. So just knowing the timing and just giving space when it's needed and knowing yeah. that, you know, as a parent, just be there, be there when they're ready to talk, be there when they're ready to communicate, ask lots of open-ended questions and just really help yeah. them get to the bottom of why are they disappointed? How are they going to move forward? What went well is really the biggest one that I always loved with my parents. So like, you know, something mm -hmm. went well. Not everything went bad. <laughs> you have to figure out what went well. But just yeah. really, really, really make sure you have that support system. And when in doubt, right. find, force yourself to think of things that you, like non, non-sport related that you've accomplished where you can sit there and you can be like, I've done this, 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 and this in my life. Where you are not yeah. just Successes, celebrate, not just yeah. Christy the swimmer. What else have you done that you have, and it could be something as little as I, you know, help someone write their paper in school or just what are right. some things that you've done in your life that are qualities that you're proud of? That is really 
like the best way ever to end this <laughs> because I think that's I, I do 100% agree with that. And I think that while we all address what we do do well, it also leaves open-ended um, communication as to, okay, if I do that well, how can I take what I didn't do well and mimic it into this? So it's like you, you can kind of, you have something to compare yeah. it to, for lack of a better term, because constructive criticism is key but if you don't have anything to look forward to that you've done well then what the heck are you you know, like what how do yeah. you know you know and so taking previous information and understanding of what that is and then being able to mimic it I think is key and if you don't know what you've done well then what are you really looking to do in your current yeah. situation so exactly. that was so key and celebrating successes is everything I think it's oh, yes. really important. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's something you do really well with your athletes. That's for sure. And we get feedback on that all the time. So. Awesome. But yay, Christy, thank you so thank much. You. This has been awesome. And where can everybody find you if they have questions oh, yeah, or yes. um, thoughts or anything like that? See, all of my social media is at Christy Kowal. Yes, Easy. Yes, <laughs> thank you for everyone who joined Yes. Me. Yes. And we'll, and also in the parent Facebook group, if like once everybody watches this and whatever, you can contact Christy through there as well and like message her and then she can direct you to her email to properly answer yeah. questions and things like Absolutely. that. So, um, about this video. So yay. Thank yay, you, Christy. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome. Well, Good stuff in there. We'll recap this and everybody, this will be live. I know that, or this will be recorded and on the page and our YouTube channel. So can watch it all you want <laughs> an hour of Christy and I talking <laughs> thank you so much Christy that was so valuable thank you <laughs> all right bye, bye. <laughs>